Your attention, masters, mistresses. All systems functional for the Everything Geek podcast. Hey, this is Rich McDonald, and I play Commander David Mason on Call of Duty Black Ops 2. And you're listening to Everything Geek podcast. Hey, it's James Arnold Taylor, the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Master Pro Cool in Star Wars The Clone Wars, and you're listening to Everything Geek, the podcast. Hey, it's Leif Gamfert. I played Uncle Ben's killer in The Amazing Spider-Man, and you're listening to the Everything Geek podcast. Hello, I'm Simon Fisherbecker. You probably know me better as Dorian Moldovar from Doctor Who, or the Fat Friar from Harry Potter. And this is... Everything Geek Podcast. Face it, Tiger. You just hit the jackpot with the Everything Geek Podcast. You're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast, bringing you interviews from your favorite films and TV shows every week and all of the latest news. Here's your host, Rory Williamson. Hello everyone, you're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast. I'm your host, Jory, and joining me Hello. are co-hosts Luan. Hello. And Al. And also joining us today is a very special guest. We have voice Hello. actress Kate Bristol, who is best known as the voice of Jessica, Astrid, and Princess Ali in Pokemon, Young Pan in Dragon Ball GT, Pan in Dragon Ball Z, Flower Girl in Full Metal Alchemist and the Broken Angel, then at Bishop in the Strike Witches shows and Seiyu Aizuka and Student One in the Nigima shows. So it's a pleasure to have you join us Thank on the you, podcast. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> so getting right into my questions, my first question for you, Kate, is how did you decide you wanted to become a voice actress? Oh, that's actually kind of an interesting story. My first voice acting gig was when I was 11 years old, um, and it really wasn't as much of deciding to do it as they were looking for local kids and I got hired to do that and that was Fruits Basket that was the first show that I ever worked on um I played Kisa Kisa Soma and I loved it and I thought it was just a super cool kind of after school thing you know that I would do every once in a while and it wasn't until I moved to New York and uh graduated from college when I thought to myself you know I, I really made the decision to do it as a career uh, because it just really, really, it always made me happy. That's great. It's always great when your profession makes you happy. Someday I think I'll find one that makes me happy. We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. So getting right into my second question, Kate, how did you first get cast <gasps> in Pokemon? Um, well, I have lived in New York since 2008, and... I didn't even know that Pokemon recorded up here. And I continue to work with Funimation Entertainment and still do, which is in Dallas. Um, and one of my very, very good friends at Funimation Entertainment, Mike um, McFarland, had said, oh, you know, I'll introduce you to the, the crew of, of Pokemon. And, and it didn't work out. And so years went by and I finally got an audition and I had to audition like seven or eight times before a role came up that I actually got. And that was Jessica. That was the first role. And I was so happy. I cried. Um, and my boyfriend's right here. Actually, he remembers that I cried when I got the role. <laughs> He's nodding. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame you. I mean, I would too. <laughs> it's always been so special to me. And I was like, oh, I'm on Pokemon. Yeah, same. <laughs> like that it was it was gross <laughs> <laughs> no i can totally agree at, at, at get where you're coming from which is kind of sad as i'm a guy and you know but i would do anything to voice on the show <laughs> yeah i would voice any character like it could get me doing a guy a girl i <laughs> do anything <laughs> it's, it's funny i all have friends who say oh can you get me on this show and i go i don't even know how to get myself on half the time so i'm, I'm still working on it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean at most of the time the casting people have to come to you and not you go to them if only it was that easy <laughs> but it's a, it's a lot of fun it's it's really a dream come true <laughs> definitely i can imagine so. So my third question is, what has it been like voicing different types of characters on Pokemon, like Jessica, who can be described as a kind and caring girl, Princess Ali, a girl who likes to get what she wants, there's a certain word I oh, won't say for girls like that, but anyway, 
and Astrid, this strong and caring girl. I mean, what do you think? Do you think it's interesting to voice different characters really, like those? Really, really fun. And to be honest, when you're doing things like this, the more obnoxious a character sounds, the more fun it usually is to do. Um, so Princess Sally was a lot of fun. Super, super mean. You know, definitely the word you're thinking of. Um, just... No, it wasn't, no, but it, it actually is along the lines. I'm, I'm mostly not saying it either. It's probably a family-friendly <laughs> uh, show. <laughs> um, Sometimes. Just, it's it's always fun to play a wide variety. Um, it's it's good to avoid uh, typecasting, um, which is always good. Because for a long time, I always just like Jessica, like very, very sweet girls. And it's fun to play either you know, crazy or obnoxious people or boys, you know, it's fun to play a variety. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And of course, you've already got a good variety with your Pokemon characters, that's <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah, so my fourth question, which of your Pokemon characters have you most enjoyed voicing so far, if you had to pick one? If I had to pick one, it wouldn't be one of the ones, one of the humans um, but I, I don't think I'm at liberty to say yet, but it is not a human, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, but of the, of the characters that yeah. I always, Princess Ali was probably the most fun, just for pure obnoxious level. Yeah, I mean, because she's definitely something very different to the show, like, <laughs> I mean, yeah. She sure was one very interesting character, well, to say that, and if you haven't seen the episode, well, you'll have a hard time thinking it's Kate who's voicing her, I'll say that. <laughs> Especially if you've heard her as Jessica Astrid in, the, in other episodes, because they are very much polar opposites, aren't they? Jessica and Astrid and Princess Ali, like, they're completely different, would you agree? Uh, I, I mean, all three of them are very, are very different attitude-wise. Um, yeah, Astrid's very strong. And Jessica's more friendly and helpful. Um, but yeah, very different. Yeah, definitely. I can completely agree. Uh, of course, the tease that you'll be voicing someone who's not a human soon. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a show called Pokemon. One would guess it's a Pokemon, but maybe they'll be yeah. doing something different. Maybe it's a crossover that we don't know about. Nah, it would be <laughs> something strange. <laughs> Yeah. So, moving on to my next question, can we expect to hear you as any other characters in Pokemon or see more of Jessica Astrid or Princess Ali? You know, it would be great if those characters were recurring and came back. Um, even if I did know, I probably wouldn't be able to say, but I'm not sure. I can only hope that they'll come back. <laughs> That's my answer. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Astrid did actually make a small cameo in the recent movie. Yeah, the which was interesting. Movie. Yeah, that, that show was an interesting cameo, and she even got the Bonnie treatment, as we call it, I guess. No. Just, just a little, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's actually a good name for it now. I'm not sure I've heard it called Bonnie treatment before, so now I'm copywriting that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that was pretty funny, in all fairness. Um, so, moving on to my next question... How did it feel to voice Young Pan in Dragon Ball GT and later at Price the role of Pan in Dragon Ball Z? Did you notice much of a difference between working on the two shows? You know what? This is going to sound terrible, but I honestly was very, very young when I did Little Pan, um, and I don't remember very much. Um, so I wouldn't actually, I'm not good at talking about any of the Dragon Ball stuff just because I I was young. I want to say I was 12, 11 or 12 when that recorded. Um, but that was the first project I worked on with Mike McFarland. And we've been, you know, we've been bros ever since. Uh, that was a lot of fun. But as far as the show itself, I, I don't remember quite what was going on because I wasn't really familiar with uh, the Dragon Ball franchise uh, when I was a kid, but I remember thinking it was fun. <laughs> well, at least if you remember that a bit, that's always a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> My... I, I, I'm, I wish I knew more, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's fine, don't worry about it. I mean, I don't know much about Dragon Ball myself, I just threw that in for their fans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
So, moving on to my final question, do you have any upcoming acting roles or any other projects you would like to talk about? Um, well, there's, um, uh, a while back, a couple months ago, I recorded a really cool role for a project. It's kind of like a, like a mixed media project so far. It's called Column, and it's about uh, tank drivers in, like, a dystopian kind of universe like a world war three type situation and i play a a chinese tank driver and um that, that was a lot of fun and that's going to be a really interesting project so if you look up column um about tank drivers and they're like little chibi females and they're really cute but it's it's very uh very foul i got to be very foul mouthed in that which is always fun um <laughs> so that that's an upcoming project that's going to be really cool and um other than that, um, I think that's the only one I can talk about. So, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, but there is some cool stuff coming up that I'm very excited about. Well, be sure to keep an eye out for those then and any more announcements on Project you. So, thank you very much for answering all of my questions, Kate. I'll let my co host Laurent ask his now. Of course. Yeah, so uh, a few questions here for you. My first question for you is, uh, which has been your favorite project to work on and why? Uh, you mean out of all the projects I've ever done voice acting wise? Out of all the projects you've ever done. The question's a little broad, but yeah, out of all of them. Um, no, I definitely have an answer for you. Well, Fruits Basket has a very, very special place in my heart because it is the first thing I ever worked on. Um. And Pokemon also has a special place because it's Pokemon and I have loved it since I was a kid. Um, but I have to say, I think my favorite thing to work on was Strike Witches. I loved the show, you know, even the blatant fan service, as we should call it. Um, I, I loved it. I just I had a blast working on it. I, I worked it. Uh, I worked on it over a summer, like between high school and college. And it was just a blast to work on the director and the sound engineer. I just remember having a blast on that. Awesome. Well, uh, my next question for you is uh, if you could work with any voice actor or actress in the future of your career, who would it be? Ooh, ooh. Oh, so many choices. Um, I definitely idolize Tara Strong. I mean, who, who I mean, everyone does girl wise in the voice acting world. She's done everything. She'd be a lot of fun to work with. Um, Laura Bailey, I did Fruits Basket with her, but I was just a kid when she did that. And now she's, you know, getting all this work in L.A. I'd love to work with her in another project. Um, that would be super cool. Or Brina Palencia, who I also know from Funimation. Um, I would love to work on something else with her, hopefully. Um, so those three women. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Those are great choices. Um, and my last question for you is, are there any funny or embarrassing in-studio moments that you'd like to share with us? You know what? I did. I do have one. So the I, I'm usually very, very punctual. It's not really funny or embarrassing, I guess. It's just kind of, it's kind of lame because I'm kind of lame. But my only story is I'm very punctual to my voice acting appointments. Like I'm always very, very good about it. But when I was recording Strike Witches, there was one time that I was almost 30 to 45 minutes late and it was because I was playing World of Warcraft and got distracted and forgot <laughs> that I had to go voice act. And I was like, oh no, and I was because I was so wrapped up playing WoW. Um, and I remember it was my Blood Elf Hunter? Yeah, Blood Elf Hunter. And I wasn't even high level or anything, but I was like 45 minutes late to the appointment because I was playing well. And I told them this. I was like, guys, I, I'm going to be honest. This is why I was late. And they were like, oh, you're lame. Uh, but it was great. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for er, taking the time to answer my question. I'm going to let Al ask his now. He has a few questions for you. Yeah, totally. Hey, yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, just a few questions. Um, who who are your favorite characters in the Pokemon? And is I mean, is there any particular character you personally relate to? Um, I don't really know about relating, but as far as in the Pokemon universe, my favorite Pokemon has always been Raichu. Um, not entirely sure why, other than it's the evolved form of Pikachu. But I love Raichu. I just think they're super cute and awesome, 
And anytime I play the games, I always try to get a Raichu. Um, <laughs> that's probably a lame answer. Probably gonna upset Rory. He's a big fan of Pikachu. Oh, I love Pikachu. I just, I just also like Raichu. <laughs> and yeah, Nine Tails. Yeah, Nine Tails. Nine Tails is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> Who, who, I mean, who are your biggest inspirations in the in the acting business? Hmm. So in the acting world, not necessarily voice acting world, I guess. Uh, I am a big fan of Scarlett Johansson, which sounds very generic, but she's actually she's very outspoken about feminism in the industry, um, and and sexism that occurs. And I don't know, she's really cool in some of the interviews and stuff I read with her. Like she really is good at fighting sexism in the industry and so she seems like a cool person <laughs> yeah she's playing a cool character in the, in the avengers as well <laughs> that that but, as well yeah <laughs> yeah she's pretty cool um and i mean this is just a final question can you tell us any shows or cartoons you're watching at the moment or uh, except for Pokemon? Ooh, yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> cartoon wise i really love adventure time uh, and online on YouTube, there's a show called Bravest Warriors. I'm a big, big Bravest Warriors fan, especially Catbug. I think Catbug is probably my favorite animated character of all time. Uh, and as far as just TV shows that I'm watching, I watch a lot of Korean dramas. Uh, those are my favorite. Um, so I'm watching one right now called You Are the Best Lee Soon Shin. Um, <laughs> I, I just watch them online um but yeah those are my favorites right now oh, oh yeah they're pretty sweet the the so the asian um live action shows they're amazing i love them. i'm completely addicted yeah oh that means you're you are like an anime or manga fan as well you know what uh i haven't read a lot of manga um and i i'm really bad about watching anime there's a lot of shows that i want to watch i did Watch Attack on Titan. I love Attack on Titan, and I love Sword Art Online. Uh, I've gotten into that one recently. So it was really cool. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Um, yeah, th those are all my questions. Thanks for taking the time and answering them. Yeah, of course. Thank you for asking me and stuff. <laughs> so that's all of our questions for you today, Kate. It's been a pleasure having you on the podcast. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. It was very, very fun. Yep, and hopefully we can talk to you again at some point. Yeah, awesome. I'll probably be uh, more eloquent next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're pretty eloquent right now. I mean, 23 minutes. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's eloquent for me. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> ah, Let me know fine. if I talk too much. Just be like, Kate, hey, shut up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would never say that. Not in those words, at least. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I don't think I'd say in that mannerism either. <laughs> I just, you know, kind of be nice and hint at it, you know. Maybe you could, you know, talk a little less. No, I'm just kidding. I'm... Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, definitely wouldn't use the word shut up, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. But, anyway, it's been a pleasure having you join us, so yeah, yeah, hopefully right. we'll Thank talk you. to you again at some point. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for having me. So I'll talk to you soon then. Bye. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Check out our website, website.everythinggeekpodcast.com slash EGP. Check out our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash everythinggeekpodcast. Check out our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash user slash everythinggeekcast. Check us out on Twitter, twitter.com slash everythinggeekp. Check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash official everythinggeekpodcast. Check out our Mixcloud profile, www.mixcloud.com slash everythinggeekpodcast. Email us at the following email, everythinggeekpodcast at gmail.com. Check out our companion podcast, Everything Geek Comic Cast www.facebook.com slash everythinggeekcomiccast Make sure to check out the host's YouTube channels. Mine is www.youtube.com slash user slash Destroyers. 
The round is www.youtube.com slash user slash starlegend9595. Check out Al's Twitter, twitter.com slash mygurma. Check out Kate Bristol's website, www.katebristol.net. And check out Channel 1 and 3 Wave Broadcast Live from www.channel138.com. Geeks out, everyone. In general, I would say just getting to do all of, like, the staples. I mean, I got, I got to catch a Pokemon. I got to, you know, have a battle with Ash and Endon, actually, which were alongside uh, Lyra, played by the fantastic... Um, uh, we were both doing. He liked what I was doing. He asked if I was available to come and audition for uh, a role the next day, and I came in and auditioned, and my first part was uh, I took over Jasmine uh, a few seasons back. So, yeah.